Welcome to another episode of the Tobago House of Assembly's Post-Executive Council Media Briefing. This week, the Secretary of Finance and Enterprise Development and the Secretary of Tourism and Transportation addressed the media. This afternoon, I think we might be all aware that I'm scheduled to deliver the third revised statement in the House, revised statement of expenditure in the House tomorrow. And uh, although I will be explaining in details um, tomorrow, I'll, I'll, I'll take this time to, to share with you a synopsis of what can be expected in the statement. The statement is an important exercise impacting the work program of the Tobago House of Assembly for the financial year. And this exercise is, became relevant um, as a result of the allocation of resources in this year's national budget. The motion will inform not only our day-to-day -day activities, but how we allocate the resources that are available to the Tobago House of Assembly. In light of the critical role um, to mo tomorrow's motion will play, in the lives of all Tobagonians, I want to take this opportunity to encourage citizens to, to listen actively and to, to participate in the process and to consider the proposals that the Assembly would put forward to you. And as we continue to, to keep our promise and our commitment to the people of Tobago to report on the activities of the Tobago House of Assemblies. Over the past two weeks, all secretaries, assistant secretaries, administrators of the various divisions, and our budget and accounting staff, we have been engaged in intense discussions to determine the way forward. We looked at various scenarios. We looked at the available resources before us before we arrived at the decision um, and the and an effective model moving forward for this fiscal year. I just wish to remind persons that the parliamentary appropriation to the Tobago House of Assembly in fiscal 2016 is $2.772 billion. And this comprises $2.345 billion for recurrent expenditure and $404.4 million under the development program. Additionally, funding for CPEP and URP for fiscal 2016 is $23 million and $8 million, respectively. And what this amounts to is 4.4% of the national budget. I must say that we are heartened, respected the increase share in this year's budgetary allocation. And however, we still have um, there are some challenges with some projects that have not been sufficiently provisioned for. As such, the Assembly will continue to prioritize projects to comprehensively treat with some of the island's development need. And it's, it is with this in mind that I will share the outline of tomorrow's fiscal reallocation in response to the national budget. My presentation will treat with several areas, including a review of the 2015 priorities, an evaluation of Tobago's development needs, and strategic priorities for the fiscal year 2016 and moving forward. We will highlight several high-impact areas on which we will focus on in this year. And I know my colleague will be heartened um, because tourism entrepreneurship and economic diversification, housing, education, and our human capital development program, agriculture, the social programs, and um, other infrastructural needs. There'll also be a detailed assessment on what the national location means for Tobago in light of the, the new global economic realities and also what is taking place in the national context. I'm also pleased to, to report on the activities that took place 
Uh, the last time I was here at the Post Executive Council media briefing, I announced the hosting of the, of the 2015 Finance Week activities. And this, was, this took place during the week of November 8. And it started with our Thanksgiving service. And this was followed by our flagship um, conference in Tobago, the annual Tobago Economic and Business Outlook Conference, the Youth Empowerment Forum, and um, a staff appreciation, um, a stakeholder appreciation and staff function. I just want to thank the hardworking members of staff in the Division of Finance for, um, you know, they work in, in over the past week, they went beyond the call of duty and they should be applauded and I want to thank them for all the hard work. And these activities were strategically planned to engage our partners and stakeholders in the business community, our young adults and other members of staff in the division and throughout the assembly. The week began with a Thanksgiving service at the Maranatha Christian Assembly. And we want to thank the, the Maranatha Church for, for collaborating with the division and hosting that event. I must say that um, this year's ninth annual Tobago Economic and Business Outlook Conference that was held on Thursday, November 12th, was a major success. It was the, the theme of the conference was enabling innovation, enhancing productivity, and embracing entrepreneurship. I think the conference, we had the largest turnout in the history of the conference, um, over 300 uh, participants. And I want to thank persons for participating. Um, also want to thank the lineup of speakers, Mr. John Pilgrim, Executive Director of the Barbados Productivity Council, Ms. Justin Francois Opadei, the Chief Executive Officer of the Employers Consultative Association of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Terence, Dr. Terence Farrell, former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. John Prince, um, Economist and Chairman of the Tobago Information Technology Limited, Mr. Bernard Mitchell, Mr. Pierre of the Eco International Development Company of Tobago and Tobago Venture Capital, um, Venture Capital Equity Fund Limited, respectively. I think the, the conference critically evaluated productivity levels and also provided guidance and innovation and creating an intelligent um, ICT um, Tobago. As as a standard, we received several pertinent recommendations which were identified and which will ultimately impact policy and decision making measures moving forward. And this will also positively impact Tobago's economic growth and development. I made a commitment at the conference um, uh, that we will use some of these recommendations moving forward. Um, the keynote presentation was delivered by Dr. Terence Farrell, and he looked at the requirements for successful economies and small island developing states, the necessary linkages and supporting mechanisms and structures for self-government. He, he urged us to examine best practices, um, to look at best practices of other small and developing states before they improve and give us you know, various um, pieces of advice. And he, uh, he urged and encouraged to be going in, and I just think this was the highlight of the conference, to take the lead and show Trinidad and Tobago the way to be a productive, diversified, service-oriented economy through strong leadership characterized by with wisdom and a persev persevering will to succeed. I must just also mention as well the Youth Empowerment Forum, which was hosted on Friday the 13th, although it's normally said that Friday the 13th is a, a black day, but I think that was really a positive day for us here in Tobago, where we, the response from the young people, I think it was overwhelming, and I think we exceeded again our, our limit, we were pushing over 200, close to 250 young persons, including students and young professionals. 
and they will provide an opportunity to interact with entrepreneurs, financial co coaches, innovation experts, and, to re and also they receive sound advice on investment, establishing their own business, and uh, also acquiring real estate at a young age. I think the, the highlight of the conference was an interactive session um, between um, female entrepreneurs, both, um, both seasoned and, and upcoming and young and emerging entrepreneurs. And we had the, the older entrepreneurs mentoring and giving guidance, giving their, giving their life story uh, with respect to what happened. And I would like to extend special thanks to Mr. Nicholas Dean and uh, Ms. Ingrid Lashley, CEO of, Ms. Lashley, the CEO of the TTMF or Trantebago Mortgage Finance Company Limited, and all the other presenters, and to the persons and the young women who took part in our Women's Forum. And this was facilitated by um, Ms. Giselle Small, and also thanks to Ms. Diane Haddad, Mrs. Janet Parks, Mrs. Carol Leacock, Mrs. Tamika Fletcher, Birmingham, and uh, Ms. Asha Mars, all um, female entrepreneurs participating in the Women in Business Forum during the Youth Forum session. And I think I can safely say that we should see uh, uh, an emerging class of young entrepreneurs in Tobago who will be taking the leap um, early in life to, to get into business or to advance their business operations. I'm also pleased to report that I led a delegation recently to the 39th Annual Conference on Cuba the Caribbean and Central America, as it focused on an, a new era, a new era in regional integration. I was afforded the opportunity to present at the conference and um, on investment opportunities that are available to Tobago. This conference is recognized as a premier international conference and it works towards economic development of the Caribbean and Central, Central America. It brings together key decision makers, such as heads of state, government representatives, the private sector leaders, investors, and in, in, international institutions, among others. Let me say that the in, our, in keeping with our mandate to promote investment in Tobago, as well as to support and to facilitate sustainable growth within the SME and MSME sectors, I addressed the conference um, and also delivered a, a presentation on investing in Tobago to a very receptive audience. Let me say that following the conference, um, I received a lot of positive fee feedback from investors and persons at the conference who will be willing to, to, to make use of the investment opportunities here on the island. Following the conference um, and th the assistance of the Acting Consul General in Miami, we were able to meet with the president and vice president of the Trinidad Tobago South Florida Chamber of Commerce. We discussed areas of potential investment in Tobago and the opportunities for small business and for our agro-processors to access selected markets in South Florida. Um, I think we, we received a commitment from the chamber for future collab collaboration. On Tuesday, the members of staff in the Division of Finance um, delivered a presentation and hosted further discussions with um, an expanded group from the South Florida Chambers, where we will discuss 
investing in Tobago, as well as market access for products, for Tobago's products. And I was really heartened by the response of the president with respect to some of Tobago's products. Um, on hand, we had uh, packages of um, frozen cassava dumpling and, and frozen cassava pool and various other products coming from Tobago, and um, they were really excited. So if you see cassava dumpling from Tobago or, or yucca, as they call it, in Miami, um, you know, this was as a result of, of this mission. So we are attempting to have Tobago's products to penetrate the international market. We have we received an, an, an agreement for future collaboration and for future visit to the island um, in late 2015 or early 2016. Um, that would provide support in areas of trade financing, market readiness, and to have um, potential matches between producers and distributors. Following that visit, the division was contacted by one company who is interested in investing in Tobago in the areas of waste management and recycling. And another company is also looking to provide support to small businesses that are having their products um, to penetrate the, that, that market in the United States. We will continue discussions with these and others from future missions. And um, hopefully we'll be seeing a lot more Tobago products, a lot more of Tobago's products um, internationally. At the conference, I'm, I had the opportunity to, to, to chat with Mr. Nestor Mendez, Assistant Secretary General of the Organization of American States. Uh, we had informal discussions and um, with a commitment from Mr. Mendez to to meet and to foster, to explore um, possible future areas of dialogue and assistance to Tobago. I think the conference has, providing a, has provided a meaningful platform for advancement of the division's agenda and Tobago's agenda. I also wish to update us on on an issue with credit unions here on the island. We are scheduled to meet with the credit union movement shortly to review and advance our ongoing discussions and also an ongoing consultancy which is evaluating the sector and exploring opportunities for the assembly to collaborate with the movement to improve the lives of all Tobagonians. We are well aware of the important role um, of indigenous credit unions, the role that they play on the island in building and empowering communities, protecting and preserving the standard of living of all our members, and also building family life and, in, and encouraging financial literacy and entrepreneurship. We'll continue to support any division. We'll continue to support credit unionism on the island and earlier this year, we recognized the concerns of many of the credit unions with respect to the, the proposed credit union bill. You may recall that I convened a meeting with the credit unions on the islands and the umbrella body to discuss this issue and to determine an appropriate response. This gave birth to a consultancy, which is well underway, and the, the final report the report is being finalized and should assist in informing us as to how we should approach the, the new and impending legislation that the Minister of Labor and, uh, and Cooperative, um, has, she has indicated that the election would be placed back on the agenda. And I think the report and the consult consultancy will prove useful in terms of our ongoing discussions with the credit union movement. The Minister of Finance, um, in his budget statement, has signaled his intention as well to reintroduce the bill. And I stand ready to articulate on behalf of the credit unions in Tobago to ensure that the interests of the credit unions in Tobago are protected 
and uh, and I have also shared these sentiments publicly recently at the 65th um, anniversary of one of the, the major credit unions here on the island. First and foremost, I will speak to the Tourism Week, the Tobago Tourism Week of Activities, with our theme, Maximizing Tourism Opportunities. And so for the last 10 years, the Division of Tourism and Transportation has been working in concert with the Caribbean Tourism Organization with a view to celebrating Caribbean Tourism Month. But over the years, we have thought it fitting to celebrate one week of activities and then focus our energies and efforts on other aspects. And so the objectives of this week activities are one, we want to increase the awareness of the benefits of the Tobago tourism industry. And so a part of that would be the education process. We also want to instill to develop a sense of pride and ownership of Tobago's tourism product through greater awareness and understanding. We want to encourage a greater sense of collaboration amongst our valued stakeholders and our partners, the people in the communities, and to build staff on morale and of course to better foster camaraderie within the Division of Tourism and Transportation. So we have undertaken this Tourism Week and so far the Tourism Week of Activities is going very well. Uh, we would have started off with our Thanksgiving service and of course our Can Food Drive where the effort at the end of the week is to contribute the food that we have received to needy homes here on the island. On Monday afternoon, by now most of you would know that we had the launch of the dedicated tourism policing unit and that was launched at Pigeon Point and there are now 25, 25 trained officers who will see the needs of our residents and our visitors and we are very confident that this will help to lift the destination's profile both locally and of course internationally. I really want to commend and congratulate ACP Moore and Mr. Headley for all the work that they have done with regards to the setting up of this unit, the division staff, as well as the stakeholders for continuously agitating and advocating that we need to ensure that the tourism policing unit is implemented and up and running. Yesterday being Tuesday, we had the open day at THTI. Of course, THTI is a significant partner in the development of the tourism sector. They are our premier training institute on the island, and they would have held their open day yesterday where they continue to inform and to educate the citizens, the residents of Trinidad and Tobago about taking up careers in tourism. And I'm very pleased that last week, Friday, they would have graduated 34 young persons in a number of different areas. Chefs, um, supervisory degrees um, in administration and management, uh, so to speak. And we expect that those persons will be deployed in the private sector. Yesterday afternoon, we launched the Tourism Awareness Campaign. Of course, one of our objectives in the Division of Tourism and Transportation is to ensure that as many Tobagonians as possible come on board, be a part of the, the, the development of the sector and Tobago by extension. And this is part of our proactive approach to the development of tourism. And we again stressing the importance. We are taking the program to the schools because of course, you know, we have to treat with the, the education process for, the, um, for youngsters or senior citizens. We're going into the communities and we're talking tourism and how communities can organize themselves to maximize the potential of tourism as much as possible. If you go into Pembroke, for instance, you have that very lovely facility there, the Pembroke Heritage Park, how can they organize themselves to put on shows, whether it be cultural or otherwise, so that when the visitors come, whether it be from Trinidad or um, internationally, that they 
encourage them to come and share and to purchase and to be a part of the Tobago culture. We have coal and uh, we have Blackrock, for instance, a lovely facility, Cats and Jammers. How do we integrate them into the process of the development of tourism and get them to contribute? And then, of course, we have Boko, where um, we have the goat and crab race. And I'm of the view that we can maximize the potential of the goat and crab race. And so that is why this program is important. We want all hands on deck. We want the information to be out there that we need to get our sectors and get our people on board where tourism is concerned. And then we look towards the staff when we host today at the Pigeon Point Pavilion again, the tourism staff talk. Of course, our human resources are very key in the process of moving the sector forward. And they too have the opportunity to be the ambassadors and also we have uh, Dr. Ralph Henry, Henry, who will talking about the roles and responsibilities of staff, the required behaviors, and you know uh, the comprehensive economic development plan. And tomorrow we will hear from our stakeholders with our breakfast meeting where we talk about how we can partner more to build a better Tobago, a better tourism sector, and the roles and responsibilities of the private sector in that regard. There is a focus on sport tourism. Sport tourism is crucial to uh, tourism as well. And on Friday, we have the launch of the Tobago International Rugby Seven Tournament at Pigeon Point Pavilion from 1 p.m. The media, I'm sure, was invited. There will be 28 teams coming from different jurisdictions. Countries such as United States, New Zealand, UK, Canada, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Jamaica, Bahamas, to name a few. And we're expecting to have a great tournament. And in that, we utilize, um, we, we, we usually sell the destination so that they too can come back for a longer stay with their family. And then on Saturday, we have the Tourism Got Talent program on the Esplanade. So we invite you, the members of the media and the members of the public, to come out and give us the support. In other areas, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate Mrs. Frederica Brooks Adams on her appointment to the TDC board, the Tourism Development Company board. Ms. Adams was nominated by the division and the Tobago House of Assembly to represent Tobago's tourism interest. Of course, we are looking forward to great representation and we are looking forward to even greater collaboration between the Division of Tourism and Transportation and the TDC because we know that the TDC, um, they play a critical and a very crucial role in helping to develop the sector, in marketing the sector, and we want to be able to capitalize on all the opportunities as much as possible. The cruise ship season has begun, it has started, and to date it is going very well. I just want to state that contrary to the reports, there are activities in Scarborough. There is entertainment at the port put on by the Division of Tourism and Transportation. There is entertainment on the Esplanade put on by the Division of Community Development and Culture. And in a recent discussion with the Secretary with Responsibilities for Community Development and Culture, she has also indicated that they are looking now at having a craft market arrangement um, in Scarborough just around G GNV, um, GNV Place. That is where the culture department used to, was located um, some time ago. And there is also cultural entertainment taking place at Fairfield Complex through the tour operator. So there are in fact three activities taking place in Scarborough whenever cruise ships come in. And I want to make that very clear. And at the same time, I will take the opportunity to encourage the residents, to encourage the private sector, 
to develop more sites and activities and so that we can maximize the spend on the island as much as possible. But we are doing our part collaboratively, the Division of Community Development and Culture and the Division of Tourism and Transportation are working towards ensuring that there is entertainment in Scarborough. We have had some challenges with the Taxi Association. However, the discussions are ongoing. Up to last Monday, we would have sought to iron out some of those challenges. Um, the challenge, the main challenge being, um, we need a more professional approach to the treatment of the, um, the transportation as it relates to the passengers. Um, there were some complaints and we are attempting to treat with that with the taxi association. But outside of that, most of the plans are rolling out as we would expect. There may be some challenges in between, but we are working towards minimizing those challenges as much as possible. And we are looking forward to a very successful and a very fruitful uh, tourist season. And it has already started and it is showing good signs thus far. Thank you for staying with us for the Tobago House of Assembly's Post-Executive Council Media Briefing for the week ending 28 November 2015.